everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Because it is so nourishing and energy-giving, and because it is so easy to digest, a glass of Horlicks malted milk is a fine noonday luncheon. Delicious and refreshing, Horlicks at noon will keep you alert later. It won't leave you feeling drowsy as a heavy meal so often does. And here's another thing about the Horlicks luncheon. It doesn't have the excess of calories that a heavy meal has. That's why it's such a fine weight control lunch for overweight people. You can make a glass full of Horlicks quickly and easily, either at home or at your work. Mixed with water alone, Horlicks is an easily digested, energy-giving drink. Use sufficient of the powder and mix well to bring out the delicious flavor and aroma. You needn't add any flavoring or any raw milk unless you desire it. Try the Horlick luncheon tomorrow noon. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, the Pine Ridge Oil Company is no more. Lum and Abner and Grandpappy Spears sold their holdings to the Southwest Oil Company for $3,000 cash and a royalty of 10 cents per barrel on all the oil produced on the property. Well, after the deal was completed, they found that they had been the victims of another of Squire Skimp's schemes, as the squire himself is the president of the Southwest Oil Company. And the Mr. Carter, with whom they were dealing, was only one of his henchmen. (laughs) Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, Squire Skimp has already taken full charge of the oil business. And so we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house explaining the transaction to their old friend, Dick Huddleston. Listen. No, I don't believe there's any way for you to make him trade back. You've already delivered the deed to him. Yeah, but we give him the deed before we found out Squire was the president of the company. Yeah, we thought the Southwest Oil Company was the outfit in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, that telegram we got saying for us not to sell our property till they represent got you, that was from Tulsa. Oh, yeah, yeah. this fellow Carter's had come down here and made the deal with us. Uh, he's from Tulsa. Yeah, right? it is. Squire just hired him to come out here and make the deal because he knew we wouldn't sell it to him. Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about it, fellas. Doesn't make any difference who owns it. You got the $3,000 that he paid you in cash, and if you get your 10 cents a barrel royalty, why... Well, You'll make just as much out of it this way as you would if you'd sold it to anybody else. Yeah, if we get the royalty. Yeah. That's what I'm feared of with Squire Skimper handling me. I wouldn't trust that fella no further than I can throw the fine. Man, we'll just have to sit over there by the oil well, and every time they haul a barrel of oil off the place, just put it down on a little book. Yeah, we can keep up with it that way, all right. Well, the thing to do is just have an auditor go in there once a month. Yeah, I could do that. Huh? Have a who go in there once a month? An auditor. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Ain't you never rode on a train, Abner? You don't mean to say you're going to run a train in there once a month. Oh, Abner, an auditor. Only we ain't going to run him in there. Yeah, a fella goes in there and audits the books once a month, Abner. Yeah, a fella goes in there and audits the books once a month, Abner. Er, yeah. Sees that they're keeping things right. Yeah, sees that they're keeping things right. Tells them they ought to do this and they ought to do that. An auditor. That's a good idea. I'm glad I thought of that. That's a heap better than having to sit over and count every barrel at the hall. I've been wondering how I could vacate myself and sit over there and count them barrels at the same time. Well, now, if you just want to lay around and rest, why, you could get yourself a hammock and just sort of lay over there and rest and count barrel too, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I'd about get to counting them barrels and count myself right off to sleep. <laughs> like counting sheep. <laughs> yeah. It's quite that four or five hundred barrels slip by me for an odor. Yeah. Well, of course, you could hire somebody to keep you awake. Well, oh, me, if I was going to hire somebody to keep me awake, might as well have them count the barrels. Yeah. Why, sure, that's the thing to do. <laughs> yeah, just let them count the barrels, and then you can lay there in a the hammock and sleep all day. Vacate yourself. Yeah, it'd be a fine vacation. <laughs> it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> lay out in a hammock all day by oil well right here in the dead of winter and try to sleep. Well, of course, everybody to their own notion. I know I wouldn't enjoy it, but if you want to do it, well, it ain't no business of mine. But I'll tell you now, Lom, I'd be awful careful about who you get to count them barrels. First thing you know, he'll about count himself off to sleep, too. Oh, for <laughs> goodness sake. Of course, you could hire somebody to keep him awake, but uh, if you 
start that, it just ain't no stopping place. He'd have to get somebody to keep him away, and he'd have to well, get somebody Abner, to keep him away. Abner, don't worry about it. Dick <laughs> just said we wouldn't have to count them ourselves. We'll get a, get a, what'd you call them things, Dick? Train. <laughs> Auditors, Abner. Oh, well, I know there's train in there someplace. Abner, Auditors works on trains. You saw them going up and down the aisles. Got their names wrote right on them, up there on their caps. Oh, you mean the fella that runs the store there on the train? <laughs> Does what, Abner? Run the store, you know, sell soda pop and peanuts and apples and postcards and all that stuff. <laughs> News butchers <laughs> is what he means, Dick. <laughs> Boy, on, Abner. Auditor tells the engineer what he ought to do and what he ought not to do. Tells him when to stop and stuff like that. Well, the uh, kind of an auditor I'm talking about, though, is an accountant. Expert accountant, bookkeeper. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, which? Which what? Which one of them are we going to get? I believe we better have the bookkeeper, Dick. That way I can help him. Well, it'll cost you a little something, but it'll be money well spent, especially with Squire Skimp in there. They drill some more wells over there, like you say. Well, you fellas have a nice income off that property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. me and Abner and Grand Babby is dependent for the rest of our lives, you yeah, might say. yeah. I'd have just druther to been somebody else besides Squire Skimp we were going to have to deal with. That is, if I have my druther. Oh, well, if you keep a close watch on him, Lum, it'll turn out all right. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, what makes me so dead blame mad letting him put it over on us that way? Looks like every way we turn, we get mixed up with Squire Skimp in spite of all we can do. Yeah, I'm sure glad we made him sign that agreement saying they'd resume all the responsibilities of the company. If he bankrupts the thing or something like that, I don't want him coming back to us for part of the money. Yeah, well, it's a good thing you had him sign that all right. And yonder comes Grandpa up out there now, Lon. I'm just coming through the gate. Yeah, yeah, well, we can go ahead with the meeting. Well, now. you fellas be wanting to talk business. I better get on back over there. Uh, don't, no, don't rush off, Dick. We ain't going to talk no secrets. No. I just thought we better have a meeting of the stockholders and figure out how much we owe and then divide the rest of the $3,000 up quick, Dick. Yeah, I'm anxious to get my part of that, too. And for Elizabeth and Pearl. They've been so hard pushed for cash, I just had to leave them down there in Texas be a bit in relay till we could get some money out of this oil well. I bet you're getting pretty lonesome for them, too, aren't you, Abner? Oh, my, yes. i just been going around like a chicken with his head cut off. Well, uh, you fellas now are going to have a lot of time to loaf now. You sold your oil well and everything. Why, well, come down there in the store and see me. Come in, Grandpa. Howdy, man. Howdy. Well, hello, Grandpa. Yeah, how are you, Richard? Well, all right, fine. Lum and Abner, just tell me about the deal you made. Yeah, yeah, pretty good trade, Lum made, I think. Yeah, sure was. Well, I'll see you fellas later, then. Yeah. Come on. Sit down, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scat, scat, get out of there. <laughs> yeah, let Grandpa have the chair there, Geraldine. You better get on back there and see them kittens of yours. They'll be getting lonesome for you. Come down. There's a saucer of milk sitting under the safe back there in the kitchen <laughs> tree. I swan love you talk to that cat just like she was a human. <laughs> oh, she's smart as most humans. <laughs> Understands anything, I tell her. <laughs> well, we better get the meeting started, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, let's get it over with. Huh? Never seen no use to have a meeting, no way. Why, of course not. Well, uh, <clears throat> meeting is called to order then. Secretary, I'll read the minutes of the Now, last... Lum, let's don't get into all that stuff. Let's get the meeting over with. All right. Well, we got to have a treasury report. Uh, who is the treasury? That's right. Well, we got all the bills here. I can read them. Yeah, go ahead. How much do they come to, Lum? What do they all amount to? Then? Well, I ain't figured them up yet. Uh, Grandpa, take that pencil and paper there and set these figures down when I call them out. we got to add them up. All right. Let's have them now. Well, uh, first, I think we ought to stand and give a rising vote of thanks to the chairmen of the board for making such an uncommonly good deal for us. Oh, Lom, we'll be here all night to start that kind of stuff. Let's get that money divided up. Well, Abner, we can't just jump right out in the middle of it. Well, I've never seen a feller as missionary over money as you are in my life. Money ain't everything, you know. Well, maybe not, but it comes mighty close to being, I'll say that. All right, I'll stand up and give a rising vote of thanks myself. The harp strings of memory strikes a tender chord as I stand here. Now, Lom, you don't set that up. Now, me and Grandpa both is going to get right up and walk right out of here right now. All right. You don't want things run the way they ought to be. We'll just illuminate that part of it. Well, let's get started. Here's the figures, Grandpa. You put them down. We stole day here over nothing. Lumber for building the office and the derrick on the oil well, uh, $373. Yeah, 
Fire now, while I'm on my feet, I might mention that I happen to know that the chairman of the board talked Walter Bates down $5 on that bill. And dog is a body never know it. It don't sound like it's been cut down, huh? Quit interrupting, Abner. Yeah, let Lum get done. Go ahead. Uh, Caleb Wee Hunt for drilling the well, uh, $50. Yeah, that's right. And he's worked every day since then. Fact is, he's worked night and day. Uh, his time runs to, uh, $96. Uh-huh. And Cedric's time mounts to, uh, $34. Too much for Cedric. Now, uh, here's a bill for, uh, all the barrels that, uh, we bought in there at the county seat. Yeah, put the oil in over at, there. Uh, hardware company. 456 barrels at, uh, $3.70 apiece. Comes to $1,687.20. For the land sake. Well, Abner, we had to have them. I don't care. It's too much money. Furniture for their new office, uh, $265. That's all for you, too. I aim to take that back after we sold out, but Squire claims it went with the deal. Why, of course he would. Yeah, depend on him. Now, here's a bill from Dick Huddleston for $40. That's $40? For the, well, that's for that wire to fence off the ground over there. Keep folks away from the well. Oh, oh yeah, that's money well. And uh, here's uh, Caleb turned in a statement of the labor charges over there for the crew. Yeah. And uh, he says they're getting impatient, wanting their money, too. That's all that. The whole thing mounts to $492.80. Yeah. That's all of it. Add that up, Grandpa. I think that covers everything. We can all three go into the bank tomorrow and cash this check and pay off these bills and then divide what's left up three ways quick. Yeah, that's the thing to do. And then I can go right straight to the post office and send Elizabeth a money order and get her and Pearl back home. Well, yeah, man, that totals uh, $3,030. Three thousand? Huh? Wait a minute. Let me look at that. According to that, we owe $10 apiece. On doubt, there must be some mistake about that. <laughs> Well, so far, it looks like everybody in Pine Ridge has benefited by the discovery of that oil well, except the members of the Pine Ridge Oil Company. Mr. and Mrs. Baldwin have spent the evening visiting friends. They're on their way home now. Let's listen to them as they walk along talking. Did you have a nice time, Tom? Oh, fine. The fishers are lots of fun, aren't they? You bet, Mrs. Fisher, especially. Oh, Bert's kind of a bore, always talking about himself. Uh Uh-huh. Seems to me you were doing a bit of that yourself tonight. Who, me? (laughs) I didn't have a chance. Every time I started, Bert interrupted me. I think Bert's very interesting, much more so than Martha Fisher. Bert, interesting? (laughs) That's funny. Well, I had a nice time anyway. Well, I didn't say I didn't have a nice time. I just said that I get kind of tired listening to Bert. You know, Mrs. Fisher's certainly a real hostess. Wasn't that Horlicks delicious? The best malted milk I've ever tasted. You're not going to give Martha credit for that, are you? Well, why not? She mixed up that glass of Horlicks, didn't she? Horlicks is always delicious, no matter who mixes it. I could do every bit as well as Martha Fisher. Oh, so that's it, huh? You women certainly are a jealous lot. Nonsense. But I don't want to see Martha Fisher get credit for something that the makers of Horlicks are responsible for. Well, I'm willing to be convinced, but you'll have to prove it to me, though. I'll tell you what you do. Have a big glass of Horlicks waiting for me when I get home from the office tomorrow, and then I'll let you know if it's as good as that that we had at Fisher's tonight. And listen, get a big package of Horlicks. And we'll always have it on hand to serve to folks that we're entertaining. You know, everybody likes Horlicks, and that's a mighty fine late evening drink. Because it won't keep you awake later, as so many beverages do. And there's a mighty good point, folks. One reason why Horlicks is such a wonderful drink to serve in the evening. Far from keeping you awake later, Horlicks before going to bed relaxes and soothes. Helps you to fall asleep easily and quickly. And Horlicks is such a delicious, refreshing drink. As Tom Baldwin said, everybody loves Horlicks malted milk. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who bid you all good night and good health.